What the fuck is up, Carnival Spirits? I'm Beastmaster, and I'm joined by Panic. What's going on, bro? Not much, just uh, hanging out. Got off, uh, actually, I put in some extra work, uh, hours at work yesterday, so they left me off early today. That's how I'm able to do this shit. So I guess it was worth it, after all. Hell yeah, I've been putting in mad hours, uh, although I did request a couple of days off last weekend for Fright Fest and uh, the 11th annual Rock and Shock. That shit was off the chain. Uh, just a couple of weeks before that, I was at uh, Shock Fest. So uh, this year, October, has been amazing. Just show-wise, got to see ICP along with the Killjoy Club and... And then, you know, for Fright Fest, it was all about Twisted and Blaze. Not only that, but uh, we took full advantage of the autograph signings and the meet and greets with all the horror star celebrities or all the big names they had at the DCU Center for the, for the Rock and Shock event. First off, the motherfucking man, the fucking coolest motherfucker you will ever meet, in your lifetime is Rowdy Roddy Piper. That motherfucker is so fucking cool. He saw us coming. Uh, my boy and I were painted up with orange and black paint. Uh, we were kind of going for the Cryptic Collection Volume 3. Yeah, I saw that shit. That was dope. You noticed that, right? That's what we were using, the, uh, you know, the... Twisted's paint from that jewel case and that CD when we were in the car in the parking lot. We painted up, and we went into the, the DCU Center, and we met Rowdy Roddy Piper, and he, he fucking loved our paint, first of all. And he was so animated, and he was grabbing our shoulders and, like, manhandling us. and <laughs> <laughs> He wanted to know where we were from, you know, but we were like, we're from here. We're from Massachusetts, you know, and he was like, all right, all right. And then he just proceeded to start telling us stories about wrestling in Boston. And, you know, he talked about uh, a ton of other, you know, wrestlers, Andre the Giant. And, you know, as soon as we were there, uh, he, he, like, pinpointed us and was like, look at you guys. I love your face paint or whatever. And, um, and we weren't even <laughs> – it wasn't even our turn yet. Like, there was a guy in front of us. And you know how they always have, like, a manager or whoever there to, you know, to take money when you want to get a picture and an autograph or, you know, you want to buy a photo and get it signed and shit. Uh, anyways, dude was like, uh, this guy was here before you. And we're like, hey, we didn't even fucking, like, you know, start this. You know what I mean? Roddy Piper, like, came up to us. Like, we walked up to the booth, but he, like, was all about it, you know? <laughs> he. Apparently, the dude in front of us was, like, invisible because he didn't look fresh like we did. <laughs> <laughs> so, That would be an awkward moment for that guy. It was awkward for him. We didn't give a fuck because, you know what I mean, we showed up, and he's already giving us daps and patting us on the back, and then we're like, oh, hold on. This guy wants to meet you first. <laughs> so, <laughs> he meets him for, like, fucking 45 seconds. You know, we wait for a minute. And then, you know, we got our pictures. They fired off, like, six pictures, you know, and I looked at all of them, and he's got a different expression in every picture, but I posted a couple of them up, one where he's like, Arr! but most of the time he was laughing, and, uh, oh, what a fucking awesome dude. You know, dude, it was a pleasure meeting that motherfucker. And that was just the beginning. And we did, you know, maybe this isn't in the right order, but I'm going to tell you everybody that I met at Rock and Shock, all right? Besides him, we met Tony Atlas, too. He's another wrestler. That's it. For yeah, me. I remember him. Yeah, he's fucking huge, dude. <laughs> he used to have, I don't know if you are watching wrestling, but he would do this stupid shit where they would tell a joke and be like, ha, 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 like some fucked up ass laugh. I know, man. I mean, he, he seems like a cool dude. Like that's what's uh, that's why I get mad about wrestling. You know the movie with Mickey Rourke. You know, I mean, yeah. he, well, he's been at the top and then he's been at the bottom. And I mean, good grief, man! Talk about the Green Mile. Well, you know what is like. I remember when uh, MTV True Life came out. They did. I want to be a 
pro wrestler, and he was on that shit. Right? Yeah, I remember that. Um, yeah, my boy Tommy is like the biggest wrestling mark you'll ever meet. Was Tommy the guy that you were with, or no? Some other guy? Yeah, Tommy had the um, monoxide paint, and oh, I okay. had the Hadrox paint. Yeah, so we met the wrestlers, and all right, so who else here? Well, first of all, Kane Hodder, the, the fucking man in the Sick Man video, and Sid Haig, the other fucking legend in the Sick Man video, were both there. All right, and I'm going to admit that we didn't actually uh, talk to Kane Hodder, uh, although one of my good good buddies was in line, and just like it looked like I was cutting line to meet fucking Jason, but really I was just going to talk to my fucking dude, and because uh, <laughs> we always just see each other at Juggalo shows, and this is a Juggalo show, but it was also a horror convention. You know what I mean? Tommy was like, dude, you were just standing right next to Kane Hodder for like three minutes, you know, because he was right in line. He was like next in line to see him, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Oh, man, Sid Haig, dude, you know, he, he's very popular, so there was always a line for him. There were people waiting behind us. But one thing that I can tell you is that last year, you know, we didn't make the seminar, and I never got to, uh, to see him. Except after all the fucking fun, the next day, we rode the fucking elevator with him. <laughs> and uh, that was very unexpected and awkward, and I was a little starstruck, to be honest. You know, after after very short elevator ride with Captain Spaulding, you know, we go, <laughs> go back to the fucking hotel room, and immediately I was like, Fuck! why didn't I ask him this and say that? You know what I mean? Like, I was kind of speechless in the elevator. So here we are at the fucking DCU Center, and I'm like, yes, I get to ask him everything that I didn't ask him when I was in the elevator with him last year. So, and here's the thing, right? The dude in front of me, or the dude in front of us, was a fucking prick. And this isn't the first time it happened either. There's a lot of assholes and inconsiderate douchebags that are fans uh, that you see at these places. Not everybody's cool. So the dude in front of us, right, he wants to shake Captain Spaulding's hand. And Sid Haig actually said, I would prefer to give you a pound. And the dude was like, I want to shake your hand and fucking went and grabbed his fucking hand and shook it. Right? Whoa! And <laughs> this dude was being so persistent that he didn't even listen to Sid when he said, my hand hurts. And when he grabbed it, he goes, from doing this all day. And the dude completely was a prick. Didn't even, like, hear what the man was saying that... Too many people are shaking his hand too hard, and his hand hurt. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people are excited. Yeah, he's like, what? He's like, what, 50, 60? Dude, just think about it, man. You got fucking uber amounts of people grabbing your fucking hand. Yeah, you know what? I hate that shit. Who in the fuck, you know, when you're greeting somebody, give them a firm handshake. They said firm, motherfucker, not snap my fucking wrist and shit. I've never understood that when... Yeah. When you give somebody a handshake and they squeeze the fuck out of it, I look at them like, dude, what? The, you're greeting me and you're going to fucking break my hand as a greeting? Right. Who fucking raised you? <laughs> I almost went on. <laughs> I almost went on. Yeah, and, you know, and after he walked away, I immediately fucking threw my fist out to him and was like, hey, man, great to meet you, you know, and he pounded my fist. I mean, he was fucking so cool. So cool. Just the coolest motherfucker, man. I mean, we showed him nothing but respect. Like I said, the guy before us was a prick. I'm sure he gets this all day long. Every other person is a fucking douchebag. Some people are cool. You know what I mean? But he doesn't know what he's going to get from fucking Ninja to Ninja. We had a really cool interaction. And here's the question that I wanted to ask Sid when I was in the elevator, I didn't, and then afterwards I was like, oh, I wanted to know 
what's it like to work with Quentin Tarantino? Because <laughs> this Sid Haig played the judge in Jackie Brown. Okay. Oh, I remember that movie. So I asked him. I said, "What's it like to work with Quentin Tarantino?" And he said, "It's like working in a blender." <laughs> <laughs> I shit you not. He told me it was like working in a blender. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the fuck that means. But all right. <laughs> you know what? That's the best fucking answer I could have gotten. I remember. <laughs> I mean, that's he, funny. He gave me some bullshit like, "Oh, it was awesome. It was fun." He gave me a funny answer. That was cool. Oh, <laughs> uh, anyway, we also talked a little bit about how last year when he when he did Fright Fest with Twisted. That was before Sick Man came out, you know, or the video and. It, it was not known to us that they were going to be working together. And, and I just pointed it out because, I mean, let's face it, him, Kane Hodder, they're all working together. They made one fucking video, and we all know it's to be continued, right? I, I just thought it was cool because a year ago it was still under wraps, and this year... You know, the cat's out of the bag. In fact, he had these awesome pictures of sick man uh, stills. You know what I mean? It was basically shots of Twisted and all of them in the video, and it said sick man on it. And he was signing those as well as other shit, you know, from his career. But anyways, man, so <coughs> that's the dude right there. You know, we had a great chat. Uh, everybody we met was mad cool, right? Sid Haig, he was fucking, I mean, you're right, he's pretty old. Looks pretty haggard, you know what I mean? <laughs> he's sitting down, like, he's not getting up. Fucking Piper was, like, on his feet, you know what I mean? <laughs> but That's, that's hard to believe. Like, they're kind of the same age, though, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if anybody watching can tell me who's older, fucking Rowdy Roddy Piper or Sid Haig. My point is, is that um, we got our picture taken with him, and then at the end, I gave him another pound. I said, "You are the legend, sir," and we walked away. <laughs> it was hell yeah, a pretty fucking moment. Um, all right, so here's a threefer. Talking about child's play. That's right. CPN, eat your fucking heart out. We met Alex Vincent from Child's Play 1 and 2 and Curse of Chucky at the very end, we met Fiona Dorif, who is the daughter of Brad Dorif. And Brad Dorif is the legendary voice of Chucky from the Child's Play uh, oh, shit. franchise. Now, hmm. Brad Have you Dorf met them, CPN? <laughs> God damn it. Oh, it gets, I, got, I got mad when I saw that lead a picture. I was fucking pissed. I can't even... I'm still traumatized. Let's let's move on. Did you really get to talk to them long, or what, yeah, did, what did they have to say? That's what I wanted to tell you. I wanted to tell you the circumstances that led up to and then my experience meeting the cast of the Child's Play franchise, all right? So, first of all, uh, Brad Dorif was a special addition to the whole Rock and Shock convention. You know, it's, <coughs> I, I think it said on the flyer that it was a rare appearance, okay? And uh, if you guys don't know, he's got a number of fucking excellent movies under his belt, going all the way back to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest with Jack Nicholson. He was in Lord of the Rings and uh, a number of other great movies. He's not a movie star, per se, but he's the voice of Chucky. Oh, you're talking about this guy's the voice of Chucky. The voice of Chucky, man. Brad Dorf. He, you you may think, you know, pe people can think whatever they think about voice acting, but I watched a documentary, and it really is. It's a hard thing to do. Just because somebody has a good voice doesn't mean that they're going to be good. You've got to be able to put uh, enthusiasm behind it, characteristic, so anybody can't just be like, oh, I'm Chucky and I'm going to do the laugh and I'm going to, you got to, you know, it's, there's a certain talent that goes behind it. You got to know what you're doing. So he's well, a bad motherfucker. Nobody that, else could touch him with Chucky. 
that reminds me of a cool, I don't know, side story to this topic. As you know, <coughs> we've got a war video coming out for Twisted's For the Fan Volume 2, right? Oh, and yeah. We've been talking about this forever, but that shit's dropping soon. And one of the things that are on Twisted's For the Fan Volume 2 is a, is a drop from the Crypt Keeper, right? You got the official Tales from the Crypt music. Hell yeah. Um, all right, so I didn't know how to pronounce the name of the guy who does the Crypt Keeper voice, right? We're talking about voice actors here. So Brad Dorif is the legendary voice of Chucky. The legendary voice of the Crypt Keeper, his last name is Kassir, you know, K-A-S-S-I-R or whatever it is. So I just did a quick YouTube search for an interview with him, right? And I found a video, you know, I just clicked on the, the most, the top one, and it was, I just needed to hear somebody say his name, Kassir. <laughs> but I listened to the interview, like, half of it, you know, for a good, like, 10, 15 minutes, and I learned a couple of things. First of all, and I guess this is a little sneak preview of what you're going to hear in the war video, right? Because the war video is all about Twisted's for the fan volume two. And, you know, how did they hook up with the motherfucking Crypt Keeper, right? How did they get him to do a drop on their fucking mixtape is beyond me until I heard this interview. Turns out that uh, Mr. Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper, was a part of Rob Zombie's American Nightmare Tour. I believe it's safe to say that working with Rob Zombie on his tour um, connected Twisted with the likes of the Crypt Keeper and also Sid Haig. He's working with Twisted currently. You know what I mean? He's repping them. It's fucking awesome. Anyways, um, so the Crypt Keeper, right? He was a part of American Nightmare Tour. I guarantee you that is how they hooked up with him. Twisted probably. Oh, yeah. and he, he gets gigs doing this all the time. That's how he makes money. He's the voice of the Crypt Keeper. So that's one of his, you know, he freelances. So it's not really unheard of for him to do a drop. It's just very fucking cool that he did a drop for the fucking Wicked Underground. I, I love it. You know, that's that was a very fucking cool moment of the For the Fan Volume 2 mixtape, if you ask me. And there's one more fun fact I found out listening to that interview that I think you guys are going to fucking enjoy. If you didn't know, Tales from the Crypt is owned by the same people who made, like, the Lethal Weapon movies. And the people who made The Crypt Keeper are the same motherfuckers who made Chucky. So they needed eyeballs for The Crypt Keeper. They went and found Chucky dolls and Chucky's eyeballs, and they took Chucky's eyes and put them in The Crypt Keeper. The motherfucking Crypt Keeper has Chucky's eyes. That's what I'm fucking telling you. They were made by the same dude, and when he's making a fucking new animatronic fucking character, he was like, well, I already got all these eyeballs from the Chucky movies, you know, and he just took some. So that's a fun fact for you horror fans out there if you didn't know. And I heard it straight from the Crypt Keeper's mouth. <clears throat> and that's the tie-in with... Rock and Shock, because I'm meeting the voice of Chucky, and I wish I knew this before I met him, so I could have maybe brought it up and had a fun conversation. Instead, you know, we just got a picture. Again, the dude in front of us was completely asinine, asking him the dumbest questions. Like, you could see Brad Dorff rolling his eyes, like, fucking get real, man. <laughs> and then me and my dude come, and we were just fucking fans. We just showed him love, and then we moved on to his daughter, and uh, we showed her love. And she was mad cool. She showed us love back. Uh, she's a fucking fan of Guar. She checked out Guar the night before. I heard that uh, I heard that Guar has a fucking female lead singer now. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know exactly who, but I'm like, whoa, that's pretty fucking crazy. They've got motherfucking monsters on reserve, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, isn't that cool that, that they got a, a female lead singer? That's pretty fucking crazy. I mean, she's got some sort of ghoulish name like fucking Space Vagina Juice or something. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so Brad Dorif, Fiona Dorif, Alex Vincent, the trio from the fucking Child's Play movies. Good fucking time meeting them. So we got a couple of more people here. First off, I'll tell you about the Maxim model. Because this is a good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, this chick, her name is Christina. Her name is Christina Klebe. She's a Maxim model. And she's also in Rob Zombie's Halloween. Okay? And to be honest with you, most of these motherfuckers were all at the convention. They were mostly all in Rob Zombie movies. You got Sid Haig. You got Christina Klebe. Um, who else was there? <clears throat> Otis, he was there too. D, her name is uh, D Wallace. Do you know who D Wallace is? No. Nah. Did you ever see E.T.? Yeah, been a while. She was the mom. Okay, uh, I can barely remember. You remember E.T., right? It was yeah. the boy, Elliot. His I little can't remember sister, what the mom looked like. His though. little sister, right, who was Drew Barrymore? Right. <laughs> and then there was the mom. I mean, it was the family, right? She was also in uh, Lords of Salem. She was one of the witches. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I don't know what else she was in. Uh, she's She's older, you know? She's a senior. I swear to God, meeting Christina Klebe... And meeting D. Wallace, I don't know which one I wanted to fuck more. <laughs> I'm fucking serious. Really? Both of them were flirting with us. Now, Tommy and I, <laughs> we're painted up like Twisted, all right? But yeah, everybody yeah. loved our paint. I'm telling you, Rowdy Roddy Piper loved our face paint. So did D. Wallace. And Christina Klebe is a fucking... I don't even know what to tell you. Both of them are fucking awesome. Uh, and Christina Klebe was in Halloween. She's also uh, in this movie called Killer Mermaid that just came out. And uh, she's the Maxim model. She is smoking hot. Unbelievably oh, yeah, hot. Yeah, you gotta be to be in Maxim. Holy shit, dude. Uh, she was fucking cool as fuck. All right, we talked to her for maybe 10 minutes. I'm not even kidding. And it wasn't like we were fucking annoying her. She was talking to us, and she was totally... <laughs> I, all right, look, I, I don't know how to explain this, but she was totally into us. I mean, she didn't come out from around the fucking table for the guy in front of us, but she came out from around the table and, and fucking took pictures with us and grabbed our butts. No, I'm sorry. That was D. Wallace. She, oh. she grabbed our butts. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, D. Well, Wallace. Ladies ain't got shit to lose. They just go for it. Loved us. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, we had a fucking blast, man. I, I tried to ask everybody if they were going to be in Rob Zombie's next movie. I didn't even know what else to say. Uh, it was great. All right, so we didn't get any pictures with them, but you know who we also fucking met and talked to was uh, Jake Busey. Gary Busey's son. Whoa. Is he crazy too? Uh, I think out of everybody, he was definitely the most stoned. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, he was on something. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but, you know, previous fucking Rock and Shocks, like, it was obvious when we saw Corey Haim, and this was, like, the year before he died, you could tell that he was on something. You know what I mean? Which is unfortunate. Who else? Fucking Jay from Silent Bob, you know, Jason Mewes, you know. Oh, I, yeah. But, yeah, Jake Busey, oh, this dude was fucking high as shit. <laughs> 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 but we, uh, we were able to get some good conversation out of him. To sum it up, man, Rock and Shock was fucking 
one of the best nights of 2014 for me. And after all of that, we went and saw a fucking killer twisted show, which you can catch on my fucking bootleg channel if you haven't already. And I got a little bit of footage from Blaze's uh, after party, just the last track, you know, but really I fucking cut loose and went wild in the mosh pit for the fucking after party. That's why I didn't bootleg most of that. All in all, amazing night. And I'll tell you guys that I had fucking crazy dumb car trouble that night. My car died. The battery died. We were bumping music while we were painting our faces with the car not on. So I drained my battery. And then my car hood, yeah, my car hood wouldn't open. So we couldn't even get the fucking hood of my car open to jump my car. And uh, this is a true testament to the power of Juggalo family. I can't even tell you how many motherfuckers tried to help me get my car hood open unsuccessfully. But it was just like this chick and her boyfriend and this Juggalo and this other Juggalo and this other fucking ninja. I had mad people fucking just trying to help, you know. People driving by saying, you need a jump? like offering to help, you know, even if we didn't need it because there were two other people with jumper cables. And eventually we had to call AAA to come, and we thought we were going to tow me, you know, to a, to a friend's house. But he was able to get my hood open and jump my car, and I was able to get me and Tommy back home. You know, it was just oh, a, yeah. it was a blast. So we just reminisced on all the fucking interactions we had throughout the day for the long car ride home. And uh, it was fucking awesome. Yo, Twisted, put it down. We can count on Fright Fest being in there every year now, apparently. And I like how Twisted's been the headliner uh, for it for the past three... I guess they've done it three times, but there was one year where Blaze and ABK headlined. It, ICP used to be the one to come around for Rock and Shock, but Twisted's really fucking sunk their claws into that bitch and made it their own. <laughs> I'm gonna have to see if I can't roll out that way, but <clears throat> all I know is it'd be a it'd be a long ass motherfucking drive though. Rock and Shock, Fright Fest, done. <laughs>